Hi, back again for the third part of our ESA lesson, which is, of course, the Activate. So, let me uh, bring back the PowerPoint. Okay, so our Activate. Now, uh, very often Activates are in two parts. Um, there's a preparation part, and then there's the speaking part. Uh, and the reason for that is that certainly with low level students, um, you really need to give them a chance to prepare what they're going to say. Um, it, it's a bit unreasonable and perhaps a bit ambitious to expect low level students to just immediately pull whatever it is they need to say off the top of their heads. Okay, so give them a chance to prepare um, what they're going to do and say. Okay, so as I say, uh, first part will be preparation. Okay, now um, you, you would set this up in uh, a similar way to setting up an exercise. You need your instructions, but it's important that you give the instructions for the preparation part only. Don't give the instructions for the speaking part at this stage, okay? Because by the time they get there, they will have forgotten those. So give them just the instructions for that preparation part. Okay, and as I said, you will give these. Now, unlike an exercise, uh, you can't really elicit an example here. Okay, but you certainly should have an example. It should be your own example. Okay, and it's something that you just show them. Okay. So again, you'll give that. Now, again, you want to know that your instructions have been understood. But we're not eliciting an example here. Um, but there is something we can elicit to check this. Any idea what it is? Any ideas? Okay. Quite simply, elicit the instructions back from the students. If they can tell you what they're supposed to be doing, then again, that's a good indication that they've understood it. Okay, so elicit the instructions back from the students. Okay, just a question like, uh, tell me what you're going to do. Okay, and that way, as I said, you're eliciting the instructions back. And of course, they need a time limit. The preparation is important. They do need the time to prepare, but it's not the main point of Activate. The main point of Activate is for them uh, to have them speaking. Okay, so don't give them too long on the preparation part. Again, the time limit is something that you really need to give them. Chris, what would be a typical time limit? Five minutes or something like that? Depends what they're doing, really. But yes, yeah, something like, you know, five, probably 10 minutes maximum, but maybe even that's too much. Five, five minutes, seven or eight minutes, yeah. Right. Okay. You know, sometimes uh, an Activate might have the students creating something. Okay. Um, create their own super animal or create their, their dream home or something like that. Um, and students like to draw these things as well. And that's great. Um, let them do that. But again, of course, drawing and particularly coloring uh, are really not the point here. So again, um, don't, don't spend too long on that. Okay, good. And then uh, the speaking part. And say the speaking part could be, um, it could be a presentation, as we've got here. Uh, it could be a role play. Uh, it could be some kind of communication game. 
Um, you've seen a number of examples um, on the online course of what we can do for Activate. Okay, so the speaking part can take a number of different forms. However, uh, for a conversation class, they all have one thing in common, and that is they have the students speaking. Of course, for a writing class, then the Activate will have the students writing. Okay, well, let's say this, of course, is a conversation uh, lesson, so we've got them speaking. Now, again, you need to set this up. You need to give instructions, okay, and make your instructions very specific, okay, as specific as possible. These, of course, you give. Now, bearing in mind that you had your own example, which you showed the students in the preparation stage, now is the time for you to actually give a demonstration of it. Okay, you will present your example, or you'll talk about your example in some way, uh, basically in exactly the same way as you want the students to talk about uh, what they've done. So you'll give a demonstration of your own example and you'll give that, okay? No time limit here. You don't need to give them a time limit. Um, you'll know how long it takes for uh, an individual student or, or a group of students to talk about whatever it is, okay? Any questions on that? You should, of course, be monitoring as the students are speaking. And then there will be feedback and corrections. You'll give feedback. Now, a word about corrections. I say elicit for corrections. You could, of course, give corrections. You could correct the students yourself. Right. Uh, corrections are supposed to be after they finish their activate, right? Yes, we'll come to that. Good, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, but as far as corrections go, and this is not just corrections for Activate, but corrections for answers to study exercises as well, um, certainly the teacher can correct the students. However, that's a last resort. There are two other um, techniques for correction that we could and should use before teacher correction. Can you remember what they are? Okay, again, um, they're in the, the online course. Um, they're, in, they're in the ESA methodology unit towards the end of the unit. Okay, so let's remind ourselves that there are three correction techniques. Teacher correction is the last one because it's the least effective. If you just tell the students what the, what the right answer is, um, then that's the least effective way for them to uh, learn and remember. The most effective way is to prompt them for self-correction. Okay, so point out that there's something wrong, point out um, where in the sentence it is, see if they can self-correct. If they can't, throw it open to the group for peer correction. And if nobody can get it, then fair enough, as a last resort, you correct. Okay, and say so that applies to both um, study exercises and for the activate. Okay, good. Now, Ryan, you mentioned that uh, corrections and feedback should come at the end. Yes, that's important. Let's have a look at uh, a few points to remember for the Activate. Okay, there, there are a number of very important points here, and that's one of them. Okay, so, as I mentioned before, certainly for low-level students, perhaps even for higher-level students, Give them time to prepare what they're going to say. Hence that preparation stage. And yes, once you've set up the activity, 
step away. You're not involved. Okay? The teacher is not involved in the Activate apart from setting it up. Okay? So when the students are doing their speaking, whatever form of speaking it is, don't interrupt them to correct them as they go along. Uh, and don't interrupt them to uh, ask them questions. Okay? What we're trying to do here is build fluency. Okay, get their message flowing from start to finish. And they won't be able to achieve that if they're forever being stopped uh, to be corrected or questioned. Okay, so just let them get on with it from start to finish. And then, then yes, uh, as you said, Ryan, uh, we'll correct them at the end. Make a note of you know, uh, whatever's going wrong, and then we'll address those once it's all finished. Good. And because you're not involved, the students should be speaking to each other, not to you. Okay. Okay. It's also very important that everyone speaks. We want to know whether each student has achieved those learner objectives, or at least to what extent they've achieved those learner objectives. Okay, and so if only some students you know, in the class of speaking, then you're not able to judge that for everyone. You need to be able to do that, so make sure everyone is speaking. This needs to be uh, in your instructions. Not only that, but they should be speaking in full sentences. We don't want them just reeling off a list of vocab um, or giving sort of one word answers um, to, to questions or anything like that. Uh, we want them speaking in full sentences. Okay. Okay, and then, yes, finally, <coughs> me. yes, you give your feedback and corrections at the end. Good. Any questions about those? No, it's pretty clear. Okay. However, let's just say one final uh, point about the lesson is that if you end the lesson here, I mean, this is basically the end of the lesson, um, as in the end of the lesson content, but if you actually end it here, it does kind of tend to end a bit abruptly. So what can we do to end the lesson? What would be a good way of ending the lesson? You elicit the topic again? Just okay, say, well, yeah. What did we talk about today? Good, okay, so basically um, we can have a summary of the lesson. And yes, of course, again, you could just go ahead and give a summary yourself. But you're right, we don't. We should elicit that summary from the students by asking them uh, two or three questions. Okay, first of all, we could ask, what did we talk about today? Okay, so yes, just a reminder of uh, the topic. What did you learn? Okay, that's a very good uh, summarizing question. What did you learn? And if there's time, you could also ask them what more they would like to know about this topic. Okay? Certainly those first two questions, let's say, if there's time, the third one as well. Okay? And that's, that's a very good uh, way of eliciting the summary and wrapping up the lesson. Okay, so question for you then. We've just run through basically, as I say, an outline of an ESA lesson showing the various components and what you can do. So, where in an ESA lesson do we elicit from the students? In the engage, primarily. Yeah? Okay, the engage. Actually, throughout, you're always in you're Basically, yes, all the way throughout, not just the engage. Obviously, the activate uh, should have them speaking anyway. But yes, um, if you follow this, you are eliciting all the way throughout. And therefore, you're involving the students all the way throughout. Okay? You're much more likely to um, keep their attention and keep their interest that way. Okay? Any questions at all? I can hardly wait to get in the classroom and try it. 
Okay, good. Funny you should say that. You have a class to teach this afternoon. <laughs> so. Okay, good stuff. So uh, that's, that's all I want to uh, say right now on an ESA lesson. Um, certainly, um, you have my email address um, that was given uh, at the end of the lesson planning videos. Um, if you have any questions uh, about this later, please get in touch. Okay. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye.